Tomas Nito's Mets career has officially come to an end after he was designated for assignment Monday morning to make room for injured catcher Omar Narvaez. Tomas's Mets career has been a roller coaster to say the least, and it is fascinating to look at as you take a dive into the numbers. As always, before we get started, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Comment down below what you think about Tomas Nito's Mets career and how it would play it out. And if he signs with another team, where do you think he's going to go? Let me know in the comment section. Let's have a conversation. Nito has been in the Mets organization for the better part of over 11 years after being drafted in the 8th round of the 2012 MLB draft. His initial scouting reports out of the draft were strong and powerful, and his defense was labeled subpar by many scouts. Oh, how the times change. Nito was born in Puerto Rico and attended Orangewood Christian High School in Florida and committed to Florida State before being drafted by the Mets. Nito rather quickly ascended through the Mets system to reach the big leagues, even skipping right through AAA after hitting an astonishing eight home runs in AA and getting the call to the big leagues in the middle of the 2017 season as a 23-year-old catcher. Tomas never really hit, but he was known as a defensive first catcher when he first came out to the Mets the complete opposite of what the scouting report said when he was drafted. And his first few seasons in the bigs proved, well, just that. His first extended stint in the bigs saw him catch 34 games in 2018 and post a 167 batting average with only one home run. The next year, he got 50 games and posted a 191 average with three home runs. <sighs> As a Mets fan, I'm sure many can relate. I remember sitting in freshman English class and, well, watching the games. It was practically a try not to uh, braid challenge for me. And I know one of my classmates would always sit there and laugh at me. And, well, I just basically sat there cringing every time he'd pop up, grounded double play. How many times did he do that, by the way? Oh, only four times. Well, that's not too bad. I suppose my memory is a little worse. I probably didn't really enjoy the 191 average. But why on earth did the Mets end up keeping a catcher who was hitting under the Mendoza line for so many years? Well, they simply just didn't have any others. There was a time when we tried practically every catcher we could get our hands on. Devin Mezzarocco, who's now the catching coach for the Pittsburgh Pirates. I mean, not doing good. He did end up hitting 10 home runs. I don't even remember him hitting one. So maybe it was a little better than I thought. But, I mean... But when you talk about the Mets' catching points, they just have had a rough go of things. The Mets let Travis Darno walk, and, well, we all know how that turned out. He's now a stud for the Braves, and due to the poor management of that situation, we even had Jose Lobotone catch 18 games for us in that same season. Then the Mets went out and signed Wilson Ramos. You remember him, the Buffalo? Well, he got hurt for uh, playing for the Guardians, I believe it was. And, well, then he had surgery, and I don't think he's played in the big league since. And for a couple of years, they had Nito as a backup. And then came James McCann, whose time was short-lived when soft-hitting Nito outplayed him as starting catcher in 2022. Oh, what a bad signing for the Mets. Mets catchers have been abysmal the last so many years, and hopefully top prospect in baseball, Francisco Alvarez, breaks that curse as he's already outplayed Nito this year and produced more than all the Mets catchers the last two years combined. Through all those bad numbers, Nito did become somewhat a folk hero the last few years. In 2020, fans started to realize that, hey, he might be having a breakout season, as in the short sample, he hit 292. But it wasn't really the play that turned him into a fan favorite. It was his Twitter account that blew him up in popularity is. Everyone remembers that Trevor Bauer to the Mets thing a long time ago with Bob Nightingale jumping the gun and Bauer being the one on the terms that he wanted to announce it. Well, Nito grew in popularity when he put out a tweet that said simply WTF Bob. And he posted a series of gifts afterwards that blew up and that's where he rose to fame. The next season, he started the year hot and finished with a 222 average with three bombs, outplaying James McCann for a good portion of the year. That same catcher that had many Mets fans frustrated was now the one I and many others wanted to see catching every day. He started 2022 out strong, as well as statistically a confusing season for Nito as well. He batted 239 with three bombs, but struck out 76 times with only 18 walks and grounded into, well... 14 double plays. He outplayed the injured James McChicken, I mean McCann, and played 98 games. 
not shown in the batting average was the 12 sacrifice bunts he laid down, which led the league in a league that does not look to bunt anymore. He was also a Gold Glove finalist for the Mets and produced the best season of his to date. Entering this season, the starting job again was a platoon with the Mets after they signed Omar Nervais to a free agent contract. They did free up room trading James McCann to the Orioles in exchange for cash considerations. Narvaez, however, quickly got hurt and left Nito as a starting catcher. The Mets called up top prospect Francisco Alvarez, and he quickly outplayed the struggling Nito. Nito thus far this season to his DFA has hit 125 with zero extra base hits and 18 strikeouts. Francisco Alvarez has seemingly claimed the starting catching spot after hitting over 300 with six bombs in May and is among the league leaders in defensive runs saved as a catcher and is elite framing, outperforming even the gold glove finalist Tomas Minito of last year. The Mets this offseason agreed to an extension with Nito, which bought out his final years of arbitration, and if released and not traded to another team, the Mets are on hook for some more money on their monstrous payroll, which leads all professional sports. If Nito, however, clears waivers and stays in the Mets system, they'll have another catcher ready to go in AAA in a case of an emergency that has played in the big league level and is familiar with the staff. In the end, as Tomas Nito's Mets career comes to a close, it's a tale of highs and lows. From his early struggles at the plate to becoming a defensive stalwart, Nito's journey with the Mets has been a roller coaster ride. While his offensive numbers may not have matched the expectations of when he was first drafted, he managed to carve out a place in the hearts of Mets fans. From his memorable tweets that made him a fan favorite to his clutch home runs that ignited the crowd, which were very few of them, mainly just a red hot series against Atlanta. And even during the tough times, there were always those cheering him on, hoping for a breakout performance. As we bid farewell to Tomas Nito, we can't forget the impact he had on the team. He provided stability behind the plate, guided the pitching staff, and played an important role in the Mets' success. Though his time as Met may have ended, the memories of his contributions will endure. Now with the emergence of top prospect Francisco Alvarez, the Mets are embarking on a new chapter in their catching department. While Nito's departure is bittersweet, it opens the door for new possibilities and fresh talent to shape the team's future. So as we look back on Nito's Mets career, let's cherish the good moments, the moments that made us believe in his potential, and the unwavering support he received from the fans. Thank you, Tomas Nito, for your dedication and passion. We wish you all the best in the next chapter of your career. Farewell, Nito King. If you enjoyed this video, as always, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, comment down below what you think about this video. It's a new style video for us. We're back in the channel cycle, baby. Hashtag Bob. It's delicious.